uh, Laura and Roland, thank you very much for spending the time this afternoon. Uh, introduce yourselves and uh, tell us a little bit about Wing Boss, specifically Big Deal Burger, additionally. Uh, sure. I'm, I am Laura Ray Dickey. I currently serve as the CEO of Dickey's Barbecue, and we have introduced uh, several additional concepts this year in 2021. So in March, uh, we launched Big Deal Burger and Wing Boss, and Wing Boss is our uh, pit smoked wings and fries and southern sides, and then our Big Deal Burger are burgers that are a really big deal, also with fries. <laughs> and uh, Roland, you mentioned how many units of each since March? Uh, we have uh, 78 units of Wing Boss and 45 of Big Deal Burger. And Laura, tell us a little bit about the brick and mortar version of Wing Boss that's going to be coming up in September. Yes, we are so excited about this. You know, it's one of those great things that, you know, you kind of have those things you, you get to really look back on your career. And I am so excited to take our 80 year young brand this year at Dickies and have these additional concepts. And so we are launching the first bricks and mortar. So transitioning from virtual, uh, which was certainly helped along by the pandemic and folks embracing uh, doing all things on their smartphone um, and adding those additional revenue streams. We have seen it be so successful and think that there is so much potential in the concept. And as folks are kind of resettling back into a lot of the things they enjoyed pre-pandemic, they're gonna wanna see their beloved favorite brand in person. And so we are opening Wing Boss uh, in Addison, Texas on September 1st. We had so many owner operators have been asking us to go bricks and mortar with it. And, but, but we've been holding back and we said, wait, wait, we wanna open our first store, our self, our company store, make sure that we work all the kinks out of it um, when adding a full bar and whatnot. Um, and so, but we've got a, we've got a very unique spin all on the wings. So many of the wings out there are just, you know, drop them in a fryer uh, and then sauce them. And so one of the, one of our core competencies is we've got, as Laura mentioned, uh, the, the name of our, our chefs, we've got some really, really amazing culinary talent in our company. Like we found the greatest Cordon Bleu chef. This guy can make, you know, a, a five hour French reduction sauce, a Scopier style, but he also happens to be, he's got him Chef Phil, but he also happens to be a, a barbecue pit master, loves to go out and do those, 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 you know, barbecue shows on the weekend where they drink beer the whole time, you know, and, and they stagger to the judge's table with a plate of food. Well, uh, so we said, okay, we want to do the same things. We want to take our core competency and put it into the wings. So we start by smoking our wings and then we finish them off in the fryer. And then we've made some really, really high quality sauces with a unique spin to them that's just gave them just an excellent flavor, really robust. Um, and so, you know, there's so, instead of just having kind of the generic offering that everybody does, fry up your wings and then basically, I mean, well, from what we've seen, 90% of the places that we've come across, I mean, the biggest chains, it's mostly just out of a, out of a bottle sauce. And so we said, no, let's create something really unique uh, and infuse that smoke flavor that Dickies has been known for all these years. Um, and so that's, we, we believe that's given us competitive advantage. And then as, as, we, as you and I were talking about, put in a bar um, and, you know, not much extra space, very, very high profit um, and just, you know, without. And so if you can maximize sales per square foot and keep it small square foot, small, simple menu, um, but a lot of revenue streams um, for, you know, simple, great product, it's going to be a winner. And that's what we believe uh, Wing Boss is. Uh, what has the explosion in virtual brands done for restaurant brand development? What a great question. I think it's really given folks the ability to maximize their revenue streams first and foremost. So those that had an infrastructure, it was certainly so necessary during the pandemic that if folks really wanted, quite frankly, to survive, to thrive again, you had to maximize every potential revenue stream that you have. And what I think has been interesting is when you had that kind of perfect marriage of not only the operators and, and the restaurateurs being willing to do that and explore and branch out, 
Um, but you also had the guests that were willing to do that, that they would accept a brand that they could find through their favorite delivery service or their delivery partner. So that, you know, in some ways being forced to, you know, rethink how they were engaging with restaurants that just provided that perfect opportunity to take a virtual brand and really test that with the guests, test the menu, uh, test the viability, test the packaging and make sure that you had it right. And again, I think that's where we're seeing that evolution that for those brands with staying power, I think a lot of them will need to uh, actually go to brick and mortar as a good pairing. I think there'll be virtual brands, or I think as part of existing restaurants are, are somewhat here to stay, but I think you'll kind of see that uh, settling in the market where those folks that were doing that uh, temporarily uh, just to add revenue streams as opposed to really a long-term sustainable brand that I think will settle out. And I think that's what you're kind of seeing in the space. Yeah, well, and if you could, and the and you know the, the the return on invested capital is is so good. If you could, you know, let's just say you open a bricks and mortar restaurant for three hundred fifty thousand. Um, if you could open one of these for you know half of one percent of that cost, and so you've just got nothing. You don't bring in any more staff into this. Um, it just exists online only. Um, and so, you know, the, the return you can get is really, really, really attractive. If you're to raise your sales by say, you know, five, 10% overall, and you've only invested, you know, a half a point more um, into the startup costs of this, obviously, you know, you could, the return really makes sense very quickly. Um, and it takes, you know, minimal training and you've already got most of the products. And so it makes a lot of sense. That's why we're seeing a lot of growth in this. There's some other chains that have done it. I've seen how they've done, you know, quite a few of, the, of our national competitors. Um, we've looked at the pros and cons. We think that we're doing a better uh, version in, in, in the space that we occupy right now. Um, so it's going well. We will, and that's why we're continuing to roll these out um, and then go with another concept even. Um, I think there's still an opportunity possibly in tacos long term. I think that that, because there's such a, a demand there, I think that, um, you know, everybody's always happy when they have tacos. I think that one of the things we've also seen um, about all of the concepts is not only for us, are they pit based and, they sm and they're smoker based, but we also looked at a menu that it was hard for folks to replicate at home. And I think that has been something that we have seen, you know, barbecue, it's the investment of time in the proteins for wing boss and big deal burger. It's definitely the pit element as well, but it's also the fryer and the fried items because that's something that folks can't easily replicate at home. And so I think that's also what's the staying power in wings beyond a trend uh, and the staying power in burgers and fries, you know, even as the category expands and, and, and contracts based on, you know, what's, uh, what's available to the guest. I think that's why it, it's beyond a trend and you'll still see those categories growing. The same thing with hot chicken when you have tater tots and fries and southern sides and those wonderful breaded tenders. It's just a little harder to do that at home.